Um, there's so many songs written about Judy, and I think one of the reasons for that is that she was such an inspirational singer. Uh, I'm sorry, she was an inspirational singer, but she was such an inspirational speaker and person and organizer that people just were inspired. And just like Judy used to say that um, great movements inspire great songs, great activists inspire great songs. And given the fact that Judy's probably inspired about three dozen songs, which I have collected so far, I say she's right up there at the top. So um, I thought, you know, what a great idea to just have some of the songs that some of the fine musicians who are here tonight, you know, have them sing their songs about Judy. A number of people could not make this tonight. Um, Joanne Rand could not make it. Ellen Taylor couldn't make it. Alistair Maselli could not make it. And um, so they were all invited, but the bigger point is that there's a lot of folks out there who've written some great songs. So we'll, uh, um, so I'm gonna start off with some of the ones I've written for her, um, or about her or with her. This first one was written with her, and it wound up being um, a hit, the number one hit on uh, KUP, KUKI and Ukiah, Kuki and Ukiah. Uh, back, back, this is back in the days when uh, radio stations had DJs. You know, the commercial radio stations had DJs, and they could make their own choices about what they wanted to play. And there was two stations that, um, there was Kika in Eureka and Kuki in Ukiah, and they were actually sister stations. <laughs> and so Judy and I wrote the song after the Potter Valley Mill closed, and um, in true to form, um, we went to the Santa Rosa Press Democrat and uh, pirated some lines from it and sent them to rhyme. And um, here it goes. This is the, not the first song Judy and I wrote. The first song that we wrote together, I don't think we're going to do tonight, but it was called I'm Voting for Clausen. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but this is one of the first songs we put together, and it made it, it made it to the radio. Judy did the artwork for the cassette single. Yes, we had cassette singles back then. <laughs> Behind you here, so I can see you better. Are we okay? Guitar stick. Okay. And here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now the mill in Potter Valley. It's been here fifty years. Mill and all those fir trees used to grow round here. But now they're running out of timber and the mill is shutting down. The pack give up their band saws and the moving out of town. And they're closing down the mill at Potter Valley. Leaving all us good folks in a line. They're closing down the mill at Potter Valley. And I can't believe the mess will be There's timber back there, a haul it right past town. Sam says the only way they'll reopen is if another mill burns town. The company says it's environmentalists tripping up their style. But as I look out, all the men to see the forest can't see a tree for miles. And they're closing down the mill in Potter Valley, leaving all those good folks in a line. our shift five years ago. I knew we soon would see this day. And our property values are dropping. I can't sell and I can't pay. That machinery ought to stay right here. The movement would be a crime. We get it fixed and run for 50 years. We ought to fix it one more time. And they're closing down the mill in Potter Valley. Leaving all us good folks in a line. So the next song, Judy uh, wrote many, many articles, and she put them all into a book called Timber Wars. And one of the articles she wrote was uh, called, um, was either called Bobby Simpson or, oh, yeah. or, you know, talking to Bobby Simpson, something like that. He was the... Uh, 
After the uh, head of the Western Divisions went on television and made a big faux pas, they replaced him with Bobby Simpson. And this is a song about Bobby, but Judy wrote the article first, and Judy would always get, she, a, she loved music, and she said to me one time, I wrote this 5,000 word article, and you put the whole thing into three and a half minutes. So, you don't need to read articles, just listen to this song. <laughs> Supervisor uh, Liz Henry, uh, and out of Fort Bragg, and um, Lisa was right there at Judy's side at the uh, Highland Hospital, and it, you can't even imagine a harder job to be with Judy most of the day, sometimes through the night. Just you know, it was hard. You know, I, I was I was in there quite a bit, and it's you know it was just amazing how much pain she was in, and you, you know how much it took out of you, and you couldn't even imagine how much it, it took out of Judy. So there they are together, Lisa Henry and Judy and myself. And um, I don't remember if it was Judy or Lisa. It might have probably Judy said, well, why don't you write a song for Lisa? You know, why don't you cheer us up a little bit? So here's a song I wrote for Lisa Henry. And there's a couple of, you know, there's always some obscure facts, like SEAC is actually the Student Environmental Action Coalition, where Lisa went to the, uh, and we were having you know, rougher days with Dave Foreman back in those days, you have to know that. And um, a few other things. Her father worked for CDF, and so here's the song, Lisa Henry. Are you ready? Mom. 
Mary, Lord, Lord, I'm gonna work with you. Your daughter's up to no good. Lisa's mama ran for supervisor. That election worked out real fine. She won the pants off a jack as a lady. She owned it on the do it next time. Lord, Lord, she almost didn't do it next time. Lisa Henry went, Henry went to the Ford Bragg rally. She said, Mama, then they said, Oh, yeah, right, sorry. the Humboldt County Jail. Mama lives in my career, a sure fuck, Lord, Lord. Mama lives in my career, a sure fuck. Here we go. songs that have created for Judy or that Judy wrote, but right now I'm going to bring up Francine Allen. And Francine, <laughs> Francine and her singing partner Namaya and I were touring together about a month and a half or two months before Redwood Summer. In fact, that's when Francine and Namaya started singing together. Um, I remember singing with you up in Tequilma. I even have that photograph with the two of you. And um, so right after the bombing, a cassette single was put out, I think by Lee Bostro. Was he the one who put that out? Yep. yep. And uh, on one side of it was Joanne Rand's Defend Your Promised Land. On the other side of it was Namaya and Francine doing Redwood Summer. So right off the bat, right after the bombing, the song started coming. So here we are with Francine Allen. Thank you, Francine. Daryl introduced me to uh, my fellow singing partner of years. And uh, the first time I actually met Namaya, well, okay, I gotta tell a little story. Because the first time I met Daryl, I picked him up from jail. And took him, he had been in a tree sit uh, down, I think in Albion, the Albion tree sit? Was it Albion or? Yeah. No, that was headwaters, that was South Fork Yarger Creek. South Fork Yarger Creek. First time I met him, I had heard about him, I had known his music. First day I met Daryl, I made him some like miso veggie soup, took him to the beach, he just gotten out of jail, and of course we sang together. Um, and then, the first time I met Namaya, through Daryl, because that day, he's like, you've got to meet this woman, Namaya, because you guys are going to sound so good, you're going to be my backup singers. <laughs> <laughs> and that is exactly what happened, but the ironic part is, the first day I met Namaya, I got out of jail. <laughs> I had spent the night in jail for what they coined the first, actually, the first uh, protest of, uh, or 
fashion of uh, Redwood Summer, but it wasn't. It was totally unrelated, but I'll take it. Sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> and I met her, and the first time we sang together, he said he started singing, "You can't clear cut your way to heaven." The mind took the low part, I took the high part, and it was just a match made in heaven. It was so beautiful. And we were invited to join the tour that um, was starting off as they were leaving Oakland. And uh, we were going to join up with them, with George uh, and Ju uh, Judy and Daryl. And we, that plan changed. Um, so the first time that we actually um, officially sang together, Namaya and I, like we actually had a couple songs, was at the Oakland, it was the community center. After the bombing, uh, Daryl had us come down and Amaya and I worked up a couple songs together. So that, uh, here's, well, let's start with an acapella, shall we? <laughs> so can you guys do a heartbeat? We can. You want a different guitar too? I might. What is it? Let's slow it down a little bit, a slower heartbeat. What does it mean to lay your body down for what you believe in? What does it mean to lay your body down for what you believe in? What does it mean to give your life for a cause that you believe To stand up and speak your mind about what you believe in. What does it mean to stand up and speak your mind about what you believe in? What does it mean to be a warrior with your words for what you believe in? I know what it means. Oh, tell me, do you know what it means? Oh, I know what it means. And what does it mean to join hands and unite for what you believe in? What does it mean to join hands and unite? For what you believe in, what does it mean to be a movement of peaceful soldiers? For what you believe in, I know what it means. Oh, tell me, do you know what it means? Oh, I know what it means. Now try this out, see how it feels. And what does it mean? To raise your fist in the air and shout what you believe in. What does it mean to raise your fist in the air and shout what you believe in? What does it mean to defend the sacred earth? That's what we believe in. I know what it means. Oh, tell me, do you? know what it means. I know you know what it means. And what does it mean to lay your body down for what you believe in? What does it mean to lay your body down for what you believe in? That's what she believed in. She knew what it means. Oh, Judy Berry, she knew what it means. Oh, Judy, she knew what it means. Oh, she knew what it
down. We're like, well, actually, the day that the bombing happened, Kema got news of it really, really soon. Cami D up in Redway, Garberville. And uh, it was all over. And Namaya came to me. I wrote this song, and uh, Daryl, uh, as he said, it got recorded. And the interesting thing about Redwood Summer is that, or I should say the bombing, is that we all know it was a smear campaign, but it was also a ploy to scare people from coming up and making their voices heard, their bodies on the line to save those amazing ancient trees. And it actually backfired in a big way, thank goodness. <laughs> And thousands of people showed up. Because you can't scare a lot of people away with those kind of taxi tactics. In fact, it, it inspired people in a whole different, uh, whole different way. And when people came up and saw those trees for the first time, I don't know if any of you remember the first time that you ever were in a redwood forest. Not just the majesty, but you're just literally, you feel a part of something so powerful and so much bigger. And if we can all just hold on to that feeling in our everyday lives, I think we'd be a much more peaceful planet. <laughs> so this song is written by my friend Amaya. It's called Redwood Summer. Where are you going today, my friend? Well, I thought I would head south I gotta tell the people of this land Things just ain't working out How the killing till there's nothing left Gentle giants of the north Laying all the forest lands to waste and Cutting deep into our hearts Friends, the trees are calling
just begun We're not giving in to fright Redwood summer still goes on And the people know what's right Always keep in mind the trees Let them be your guide Always keep said, my goodness, how many songs were inspired by that time frame? All right, I'm going to do my rockin' song. I had three songs, and I was like, okay, I'll do my acapella. <laughs> I'll do my, uh, have to do the Redwood song right now. I'm going to do my rockin' song. And it's funny because, uh, I'll see if my voice lasts through the rockin' song, but, um, you know, even songs that were written 20 years ago, are timeless and um, I keep thinking every single time something new happens I'm like yep still appropriate yep still appropriate won't it be nice when we don't have to sing these songs anymore <laughs> and we can just sing songs of peace and love and kumbaya and this is not a song of kumbaya <laughs> and I'm giving my little disclaimer if this is uh, going on the radio it does uh, a little bit of a moment of an inappropriate radio play. to creating a solution. You know, 
They like to keep us tame. They want to keep us drugged up. So we'll play along with their game. But you know it's a new time. Set a fresh time. It's a time to make a change. So we'll speak up, speak up, scream and shout. Yeah, you're gonna hear us coming. No more injustice. Sing out with me no more. No more rape. We won't be silent anymore. No more fear. Open your eyes, open your ears. I brought her and the Maya together and then they quit my band. It's the story of my life. Anyway, this next singer, Mokai, I'm going to bring up. Um, when I first came to Humboldt in uh, November of 1985, I was brought right to the... Uh, door of the Environmental Protection Information Center by a Cheyenne Roadman by the name of Kingfisher that I had picked up hitchhiking. And he brought me there and right there in the center of the door, there was a little sticker with a green fist and it said, Earth First, no compromise in defense of Mother Earth. Well, I had never heard of Earth First, had no idea what it was. So I asked Mokai, who was there at the Epic office, I said, uh, so what's Earth First? He said, oh, they're just a bunch of people who do things. <laughs> And I said, well, how can I be an Earth Firster? He said, well, you just say you are. <laughs> Later on, I wrote my first article about a trespass we had done, and I wrote it for the Redwood Times with a little photograph. I'd never been published in a paper. I never had a photograph published in any paper. So I, wanted to, I didn't want to sign it with my name because it was a trespass. So I asked Mocha, I said, can I sign it Earth First? He said, sure, man, do whatever you want. <laughs> so that was, he basically introduced me to the Earth First ethic. <laughs> and uh, on top of all that, he sings and writes songs, and he wrote a great song about Judy, as well as a bunch of other great songs, and is a great performer. And he also, when I, back in his heyday, I don't know about now, he could free, tr free climb a redwood, just grip it onto the bark and shoot right up, and just the most amazing tree climber I've ever seen, and did a lot of hiking in headwaters, and a lot of to do with the mapping and the founding of headwaters forests. So here he is on the guitar, Mokai. Thanks everybody, really nice to be here with all of you tonight. Remembering Judy, <clears throat> I was just in there, um, took a look at the car, and man, that's a real gut punch that'll really bring it home to you. Really? So I came up to the North Coast here, to Northern California in the early 80s. I was living out in the hills, and being from New England, I didn't know anything about wildfire. These forest fires that could come and take over a whole mountain, take over a whole watershed. So one morning I woke up in Southern Humboldt and looked out and the sky was dark with gray smoke, black smoke. It lasted for days, the sun was blocked out. And I learned that later, I learned that a friend lost their homestead in that fire. So I wrote this song about that. And in the decades since, wildfire has become worse and worse. Seems like fire season lasts the whole year now. I guess this year in California, over 2 million acres burned. 
so many of my friends and family. My sister evacuated from the Big Basin fire last year, a couple years ago. And some of us were talking about climate change 30 years ago. Now we're living it. There's a strange kind of haze over the sun. Somewhere something's burning. Fire's got me on the run. Well, there's things I should be doing. Should have already done Kinds of things that you shouldn't shun Things I'll never do now I've left them at begun Oh, it's all gone up in smoke Hold that fire line, someone Wildfire burning, better run Wildfire burning, turning the sky black Wildfire burning, no turning it back. Wildfire burning, planes rolling high. Wildfire burning, don't ask why. Well, my life is raging out of control. One minute I'm living high. The next I'm living on the door I was blazing with passion To reach my goal I was the white hot ember That coyote stole Well, the fire storm's advancing It's taking its toll My heart just keeps smoldering Like an angry coal Wildfire burning in my soul Wildfire burning, turning the sky black. Wildfire burning, no turning it back. Wildfire burning, flames rolling high. Wildfire burning, don't ask why. Lightning strike in the middle of a drought Uncertainty flames into doubt Like a callous match that you didn't crush out Well, if you're taking things for granted And you never did without Or oh, somewhere through the smoke I hear somebody shout Won't somebody tell me what's this all about Wildfire burning, look out Wildfire burning, turning the sky black. Wildfire burning, no turning it back. Wildfire burning, flames rolling high. Wildfire burning, don't you, don't you ask why? Wildfire burning, wildfire burning. So I real, feel real fortunate to have gotten the opportunity to know Judy Barry personally. Um, uh, I had already left uh, Humboldt at the time when she became really active in uh, the Headwaters Forest and in the, the old growth logging campaigns. Um, 
And I was a uh, part of the groups that were involved with going out in the woods and identifying where the logging was going on and then picking a time and a place and going out and setting up the tree sits and um, climbing the trees. So one time Judy uh, invited me up to work on a uh, action that she was doing and, and it was just uh, so interesting to me like just how much imagination and creativity she brought to it. So it was like a thing where they wanted to deal with uh, LP uh, cutting second growth and cutting all the way down to um, the smaller trees. So we had tree sits, we had a tree sit campaign, but this time we were trying to defend these baby trees, so she called it the baby tree sit. So I came up and worked on that one with her, climbed, set, set up the tree sit for her. And one of the things that I wanted to that I wanted to bring out in this song that I wrote for Judy was that, uh, you know, just what a, what a live wire she was, what a real lively person and just not one of these uh, dour and over serious uh, activists. She was uh, a, a real person who had real emotions and real feelings and just put it out there in the world and, you know, got, you know kind of built a fire all, under all of us. I never knew anyone so easy with her laugh Busting out at every chance Making her friends glad Driving her opponents mad Taking the radical stance Finding the humor where most fear to even look Shining a light in the dark Wise crack on her tongue Somebody got stung The tinder's dry, now she lit the spark And in the worst of times, she'd be laughing and fiddling while the fire burns Giving us the blessing of her smiling face And pointing the way as the page turns Warrior woman Warrior woman Can you try that? Warrior woman Sing along Warrior woman I never knew anyone so eager for the fight Always ready to mix it up The brawling kind with a strategic mind No holds barred She'd tell you right up Look in the man Right in the eye Taking the heat for all of us Making a joke about it Getting something done about it the woman's seriously dangerous And in the worst of times She'd be laughing And fiddling while the fire burns Giving us the blessing of her smiling face And pointing the way as the tables turn, warrior woman, come on, sing on, warrior woman, 
Let me hear you. Warrior woman. Let Judy hear you. Warrior woman. They'd like to stop her. They tried to kill her. They want to silence her voice. But they cannot touch us. They cannot control us. They cannot take away our choice. And every time I hear her laugh, I feel so free. Warrior woman. Warrior woman. Warrior woman. So when I first was involved with Earth First back in the early 80s, it was uh, very much a, a boys club. And uh, one of the things that happened when uh, Judy Barry arrived um, is that she changed that and she brought the, the voice of women and women activists forward. She also brought the voice of social justice into into Earth First with her organizing around with the, uh, the Africa family. And um, I'd like to play this next song um, off my latest album. Uh, I, I'm up here from San Francisco, and as I was driving over the Golden Gate Bridge, I realized I forgot the bag with the albums in it. <laughs> Typical. So uh, if you would like to support me, uh, check out mokai.bandcamp.com. That's where you can find all my music. And this is a song. Uh, I, I think it's relevant. Um, Judy was a single mother raising two kids, and I wrote this song based on my experience of uh, so many of the women that I know doing the hard job of um, raising children alone. I know there's a lot of guys out there also trying to raise their kids alone, but maybe not facing so much of all the rest of the stuff in society that women have to deal with, sexism and discrimination. It's called Mama's Got the Blues. girl since she was a teen she's been a waitress and a sales girl and everything in between a couple of decades she's got a couple of kids well that's a lot of life whether or not you're somebody's wife got the blues She's been working all week on her feet wearing out her shoes I said oh mama's got the blues She's got so much to juggle it's a daily struggle Ain't it the truth Ain't it the truth Her boy came home with his tooth knocked out from a schoolyard fight Her teenage daughter came home Way too late last night Her boss is riding her He won't get off of her case One of these days she's gonna lose it And tell him right to his face Oh, mama's got the blues been working all week on her feet, wearing out her shoes. I said, oh, mama's got the blues. She's got so much to juggle, it's a daily struggle. Ain't it the truth? Ain't it the truth? She 
remembers when she was younger, didn't have a care. Hanging with her friends, doing something new with her hair. It's been so long she can't recall the last time she had fun. It's so hard to relax when her working day is done. Oh, mama's got the blues. She's been working all week on her feet, wearing out her shoes. She said, oh, mama's got the blues. She's got so much to juggle, it's a daily struggle. Ain't it the truth? Ain't it the truth? I wonder about a society that don't take care of its own. It's a hard enough job to raise a child all alone. It don't help when they make it so hard to get the basic things you need in such a wealthy country. Blinded by greed Oh, mama's got the blues She's been working all week on her feet Wearing out her shoes She said, oh, mama's got the blues She's got so much to juggle, it's a daily struggle Ain't it the truth, ain't it the truth Thank you. Another amazing set from Mokai. Unbelievable. It never ceases to impress me. Uh, long time ago, I don't remember when, I got an email, I believe, or a letter. It might have been a letter from a woman named Rosebud who wanted to send me her song she'd written uh, for Judy. It was called Judy. And it says, send it to me. I had a radio show on KMUD, Wild River Radio. And I was so amazed. And next thing you know, she, she was in L.A. at the time, and she moved to Laytonville. And she hooked up with Scott, formed Bug Guts. And here they are today. Wow, this is awesome. Look at all these beautiful faces. I see the toes, the hands, clapping, tapping. Incredible music so far, hasn't it been? It's just amazing. Ow! Ow! What a tribute to Judy. We actually came from Southern California, Scott and I. Originally, we um, were not up here for Redwood Summer. We, we were actually involved with um, Earth First Down in Southern California, actions out at um, Big Mountain uh, with the Diné and uh, Desert Pipeline and all sorts of different things that were going on down there. And we were hearing about, reading about mainly in the journal, um, Dog Bless the Journal, Earth First Journal, thank you, Lifeline for activism. And we were hearing about all these incredible actions to save, stand up and, and save these beautiful giants. And that's how we actually came to meet Judy, not in person, but in spirit and, and came to feel that we knew her. So, and, and many people that are here um, tonight, I know you were in on those actions. Thank you, thank you very much. So. This song, um, I was inspired to write um, after she had already been bombed and, and she's here right now in the ether with us. And this is what flowed through me. It's simply called Judy. Once upon a time, there was a little girl and like a tree she grew up to be. Just and strong But the forces of greed Fell upon her Tore her up In a car bomb FBI lie, lie, lie. But she stood up She walked up She ran on and on Miss Lazarus Lassie Freddy's marched on through her life like cancerous termites on speed and her last ribs would slumber. Can you find the cost of freedom lost now that buries in the ground as she 
sends up her voice through the leaves of the forest. Justice will be found cowering in the darkest corners of their nightmare dungeon. Come morning, a new farmageddon, another bright, shiny dollar. So take heed when you breed, brothers, sisters, she sang out this warning. There's a hole in the heavens now through which the dark, dead sky is falling. And while all the stumps of the lungs of the world, they clear cut and bleed. Grow up to be cowards. Can we find what's wrong with this picture, dear? Now, Judy's giants can't be found. And she sends the leaves to the toad and the trees, and we come. Saint Judy, sweet Judy, as thieves steal the sun. Something is sacred as helium boils their blood. And as thieves fell the ancient giants, rebel. For nothing is sacred as these Predators prey on themselves. Oh, Judy, Saint Judy, Saint Judy. She's got a pocket full of fireflies. She's gonna find her way home again with a sweaty fist. Of lightning love, she gonna hurl the hatred from this stone. She's gonna turn the whole world on. And with a fiddler's flash of dragon fire, she gonna torch a trail on overgrown back to Gaia's breast. gonna love the electric logger home. Yeah, she's gonna turn the whole world on. Ooh, ooh, Judy girl, things to you, things are gonna get easier, yeah. People who uh, make a great sacrifice of their freedom for an active cause are always uh, people to be admired, and Judy Berry was certainly one of them. And, uh, this is a song kind of about those people. Jesus Christ, Joan of Arc, Robin Hood, Henry 
David Thoreau, Chief Joseph, Geronimo, Sitting Bowling, Crazy Holmes, Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, Mary Harris Jones, Joe Hill, Susan B. Anthony, and Alice Paul. Most my heroes were all criminals. All my heroes were all criminals. Most my heroes are all criminals. Mohammed Gandhi, Sheikh Obama, Cesar Chavez, the current Dalai Lama, Mohammed Ali, Rosa Parks, Nelson Mandela, Steve Beagle, Daniel Ellsworth, Brown and Barry, Chelsea, Fanny, Edward Stolten, and Judy Berry. Most my heroes were all criminals. Most my heroes were all criminals. Most my heroes were all criminals. such a hero and she inspired so many of us obviously here all these songs all these beautiful hearts even though we never met her in the flesh the inspiration traveled because of the passion and the passion of all of you and the passion of all the people working with her saw the truth of that beauty that raw incredible passion the leader that she was and the organizer and knowing and recognizing that we do this through peace uh, she helped inspire this song along with Paul Watson she helped me see the world differently for giants around the world the redwoods the elephants the leviathans the whales and the oceans Planet Ocean produces 80% of our oxygen. If you haven't seen the documentary Watson, that's where this came from. Once upon an ocean teeming with abundant love for those billions of cetaceans dreaming to reach the stars above for love, my Yeah. 
Neptune and they're fighting, fighting side by side with Watson, those mighty pirate sirens rising, hoisting up there, Jolly Rogers singing, don't mess with the oceans, sons and daughters, don't mess with the oceans. Alicia, just working at KZYX now, help me assist Karen Madsen in curating this piece. A big hand for Karen Madsen. Just gotta thank you. I learned so much about museum curation. He's gonna do an exhibit for everybody. <laughs> in any case, here we are. It's on. Alicia Littletree. Hello, dear friends. Wonderful to be out here with you, um, remembering Judy. And I'm just tickled to get to play a few songs for you. Um, I'm gonna start with... I'm kinda quiet. Well, actually, no, I'm not. Okay, we're good, we're good. Uh, thank you, I love that. It's a very nice guitar. Um, so this is, uh, for those of you who remember Judy's radio show on KZYX. Yeah. Punchy Judy! Punchy Judy! This is her theme song. And you know what? This is what Judy's hometown. So a lot of my memories of Judy come from here. And I just love thinking about sending this music out to String Creek. Don't you know we're talking about a revolution? Sounds like a whisper. Don't you know we're talking about a revolution? Sounds like a whisper. Well, they're standing in the welfare lines, crowding on the doorsteps of those armies of salvation, spending time and the unemployment line sitting around just waiting for a promotion don't you know we're talking about a revolution sound like a whisper poor people gonna rise up and get their share poor people gonna rise up and get their share because finally the table Starting to turn, talking about a revolution. Said finally the tables are starting to turn, talking about a revolution. Talking about a revolution. Don't you know you better run, 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 run,
talking about a revolution. I said you better run, 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 run. Talk about a revolution. We're talking about a revolution. We're talking about a revolution. Somebody uh, around this whole event and, and uh, just all the sort of talking to people about it, somebody asked me, um, how would Judy want to be remembered? And I said, as a revolutionary, that one's easy. Um, so this song, next song is very, uh, is very personal. It's very quiet. Um, Francine and I were talking just before about how we're kind of playing all these old songs that bring things right back. Like, we haven't played these songs in 20, 25 years, and you know, you, you start to sing it and you're right back there. Well, this is a song that I wrote that sort of captured that moment, those last, those, Judy's last hours, and that kind of sweetness of our family being together in our home. And I think that this song is very much about uh, anyone who's lost someone that they love. It's just those feelings of disbelief and waiting for them to come home. We were all so young. Just so young to have all this happen. Too, long, too young to lose her. as you drive when you come home there'll be a fire in the stove the house is lit up bright in the warmth and the light there is nothing to fear
So don't you leave without saying goodbye. Cause you know I can hear the sound of your tires on the bridge as you drive. When you come home, there'll be a fire in the stove. A house is lit up bright in the warmth and the light. There is nothing to fear. Last song. This is a song uh, that was a hard time, a very, very hard time. And um, Judy, Judy and her daughters and I lived uh, in her house on String Creek. And you know, when she died, her daughters went and lived with their dad, of course. And I kind of tried to stay close to them and moved to Ukiah and just felt so protective of them and so sorry that they lost their mom, you know, they didn't really have the easiest childhood uh, with what was done to Judy and them and their family. And so I just, I wrote this song for them. I wanted them to have, you know, a, a little bit of her voice cheering them on. And I wrote it for myself. <laughs> and I wrote it for all of us. It's called Hold Your Head Up. Judy 
Waterbury. Another awesome, another awesome set here at Judy Barry Stock. Judy Palooza. <laughs> Judy Palooza, very good. <laughs> well, all the way from Calaveras County, Bear and Mark Dyken have traveled uh, as long as well as bringing their sound system. And these guys have been playing for the Earth for what 40 years, or is it, is it more than that? I mean, who's counting, right? 50? I'm not, I'm not even allowed to say. What did he say? He's older. Mark's older. <laughs> I don't know. Is that loud enough, you guys? Yeah, turn that guitar up a little bit, in other words. <laughs> Guitar. Check, check. Hey, have you ever watched the movie J. Edgar and then watched the movie about Martin Luther King back to back? <laughs> That's part of the story. Like it occurs to me, who does the FBI work for? What was the FBI doing at the bomb school? Okay, spoiler alert, it's not us. <laughs> this next song, uh, you, you all know what to do when someone says three cheers. You say, hey, 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 right? So you got a part there. Big trees hitting the ground In the spirit of Martin Luther King Jr. They called for people from all around Let's hear it for the little guys Hey, hey, hey! Never did give up Three cheers for the little guys Hey, hey, hey! Drink their victory cup Do props to the little guys They went shoestring the fire in their hearts love in their eyes well little guys someone laid in wait that day the facts you can't deny the bomb was designed to be triggered by motion after a certain time when the explosion occurred in Oakland this is what we find The FBI around the corner Like they had their fingers in their ears And blinders on their eyes Let's hear it for the little guys Hey, hey, hey Drink their victory cup Do props for the little guys Hey, hey, hey For fighting the fight, that's good Let's hear it for the little guys They went out on a shoestring Fire in their hearts, love in their eyes. Well, the little guys.
about the court date the jury did decide the fbi and the oakland police falsified and lied so much focus on framing the victims never did investigate 4.4 million a little too late give it to the late great estate something still ain't straight who went gunning for the little guys never did retire who went gunning for the little guys hey, hey, hey. stood tough under fire do props to the little guys they went out on a shoestring with fire in their hearts love in their eyes oh now Well now, the whole thing left me with a very bad feeling. I said the whole damn thing left me with a shaky feeling. And it ain't gonna go away. No, it ain't gonna go away until I know. Until we all know, beyond the shadow of a doubt, beyond the shadow, justice for Judy Berry. Justice for Judy Berry. Justice for Judy Berry. Justice for Judy Berry. We can't get no further Justice. without. Everybody, what? Justice. We can't get no further. Justice. What? Justice. Justice. Justice for the people in Philadelphia at the move. Justice. Justice for the victims of COINTELPRO. Justice! Justice! Justice for Martin Luther King Jr. Justice! Justice! Justice for Malcolm X! Justice! Justice! Justice for the people sleeping in the streets right here in Justice. America! Justice! Justice for Leonard Peltier and Wounded Knee! Justice for Big Mountain! Justice for the Black Hills! I need to know it's all right. I need to know it's all right to stand up and speak your mind in America. I need to know it's all right to stand up and speak your mind, even if you got a different opinion than corporate America. Cause that's what this country's supposed to be all about. And deep in the heart of America, deep in the soul of America, we're crying out, justice for Judy Berry. Justice for Judy Berry. Justice for Judy Berry. Justice for Judy Berry. Crying out, justice! Cry now, justice. justice. Gotta help it. Gotta help it. Justice. All those trees, all that carbon. When you hear climate deniers talking about how those damn environmentalists, they had to stop us from cutting down all those trees.
A few years ago, I was on bicycle music tour with the Biketopia Collective and the Bicicletas Por La Paz. We were going down the coast on our bicycles, carrying everything we need for a concert for about 300 people on our bicycles. Mic stands, speakers. One guy's got a cello. And my buddy Adley, he's doing a subwoofer. He just put wheels on it, on his bicycle. You gotta have that bass, you know? Anyways, we're heading down the coast and it's foggy and misty as it is in the redwoods. We spent the night and woke up started down the road, ended up at a little cafe, having a cup of warm tea. And across the street was a giant statue of Paul Bunyan. Probably a lot of you know the place I'm talking about, right? Paul Bunyan and his big blue ox are large and in charge. And I was looking at it and thinking back on the days of Redwood summer and how we shut down Samoa Boulevard with solar powered concert right there. And people took over the trucks, log trucks that were sending those mighty redwoods off to Japan to be sunk under the water and sold back to us later somehow. And I began thinking about Paul Bunyan and all the stories and how the logging was glorified. And it occurred to me right there Paul Bunyan was in need of redemption. So right here, right now, in mythic time, is Paul Bunyan's redemption. Paul Bunyan's redemption. See, Paul Bunyan was a very big man. And he strode out of his very big bunk into the chow hall and sat down at the table for his usual breakfast of 14 foot stack of flapjacks a couple of buckets of maple syrup and a whole lot of butter just melting down over them flapjacks this man had a wheelbarrow full of bacon a stock tank full of hot coffee. But on this particular day, Paul looked down and he said, ah, my colitis is acting up. I don't know if I can handle this. It's feeling a little dizzy, kind of hot in here, isn't it? I think I need to go down to the Arcata Co-op, get me a carrot juice or something. This is not feeling right. So the big man stood up and he made his wobbly way out the front door. For the first time in his mythic life, Paul Bunyan took a look around and he saw what he'd done to the forest. He saw what he'd done to the native people that counted on that forest for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And he, he contemplated what had he done to the species of wingeds and four-leggeds and the fish that counted on that forest. Time and memorable. And the big man fell to his knees. And a tear fell. And splashed the ground. And right there where Paul Bunyan's tear hit the ground, well, a redwood tree germinated magically it just sprouted up and Paul Bunyan had an epiphany he called for the blue ox and he traded in his axe for a hoe dad he went down and he filled up that cart full of bare root redwood trees and he set out to replant the two million acres the two million acres of old growth redwoods Paul Bunyan Paul Bunyan's redemption. Paul Bunyan's redemption. Paul Bunyan's redemption.
Bunyan's Redemption. Paul Bunyan's Redemption. not a tree farm. Forest is not a factory. Forest is the dwelling place of an ancient community. These trees are our caretakers. Don't you bite the hand that feeds. Stop cutting the trees. Please. This should be obvious. Should be obvious by trees. now. Your mighty leg of thunder, wondrous elder beings. Purify the water we drink and they clean the air we breathe. These trees are our caretakers. Don't you bite the hand and feet, stop cutting the trees. These old growth trees, please stop cutting the old growth trees. How many board feet to a species? Some CEO got a head full of feces. elder beings purify the water we drink and clean the air we breathe these trees are our caretakers don't you bite the hand that feeds stop cutting the old growth trees this should be obvious 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 by now. Stop cutting. Stop cutting. This is the water we drink. This is the air we breathe. Yeah. The mighty leg of thunder. The old growth trees. The old growth trees. Please stop cutting. Stop cutting. Stop cutting. The old growth trees. Yeah. Thanks a lot, everybody. This has been really rejuvenating for us to come up here and see everybody and play these songs. Thanks for having us, Daryl. Imagine all the way from Calaveras County, come up here just to sing a few songs. But like I told everybody who's coming from wherever, this is an amazing event. This is an amazing exhibit. And, um, you know, really just fantastic to see Judy commemorated, memorialized, right here in her hometown of Willits. Are we doing this thing? Yeah.
we're doing this thing. Check it, check it, check out. Surrounded by all these strong women, Daryl. Can you handle it? I know, right? I've been handling it all my life. <laughs> so. This is about Ginny Berry, isn't it? Yeah. So I just, thank you, Abigail. Another strong little woman right over there. My daughter, Abigail Cherney. So I wrote this song for Judy a long time ago. She added the verse at the end. But there's something that you all ought to know. <laughs> what? What do you mean, no? But you all need to know, why does everybody always think the worst of me? <laughs> everybody wants to know, you know, this is the FBI stole my fiddle, right? So the question I've been asked more than anything else, where's Judy's fiddle? Yeah. Well, folks, to my right, audience left. After a trip to New York City, you get all the pieces put back together. A little epoxy left on the holes where it was blown up to show the lines. Is Judy Barry's fiddle. had it for like years and never thought to tell us <laughs> but that's a whole nother story in fact our lawyers are going to be here on october 10th that's uh, a week from sunday one to three o'clock dennis cunningham might be your last chance to see him dennis is not getting any younger josh Marcel, ben rosenfeld alicia little tree hopefully juror mary nunn will all be here well, I was driving out of Oakland on a tour for Redwood Summer When a bomb went off inside my car, it was a major bummer They blamed me for the bomb that almost took my life But there's one more thing that they did One last twist of the knife The FBI stole my fiddle The FBI stole my fiddle The FBI stole my fiddle The FBI stole Next day in the paper, although it made no sense, there's a photo of my fiddle and they called it Evidence. They took away my Birkenstocks, they took away my car, oh, and they took my fiddle. Well, you know they went too far. The FBI stole my fiddle, the FBI stole my fiddle, the FBI stole my fiddle. J. Edgar Hoover stole my fiddle. Take one away with there, Judy Barry's fiddle. said my strings was fuses my bow it was the light and down inside my fiddle hole i stashed my dynamite so when i stroke my fuse strings with my fiddle bow you better run for cover cause this fiddle might just blow the fbi stole my fiddle the fbi stole my fiddle william sessions stole my fiddle Special Agent Richard Held is the man behind the show. He helped frame Leonard Peltier and jailed Geronimo. He falsified the evidence, left the sentences no bail. It's time to set him free and let's put Richard Held in jail. The FBI stole my fiddle. The FBI stole my fiddle. Richard Held stole my fiddle. And I want my 
stole my fiddle Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Abby. Ah, we gave birth to a personal photographer. All right. So, um, wrote a lot of songs for Judy. But, you know, there's a lot of prophecies that happen in this world. And Judy Barry and I used to joke before the bombing, but after the death threats, but before the bombing, that we had two goals. Judy's goal was... There was this mass murderer, Ramon Salcido, who killed five members of his family. You might remember back in 89, 90. And every day in the paper was Salcido kills five people. Salcido finds God. Salcido escapes from prison. Prison. Salcido gets married in prison. It was like every day he was in the top of the headlines. And Judy Barry's goal for Redwood Summer was to top Ramon Salcido in the headlines. My goal was to write a book called How to Become a Martyr Without Really Dying. press democrat see the front page photo i wonder who is that it's judy barry don't you think that's neato she's on the top fold right above salcedo judy barry judy barry judy barry judy barry let's repeat it endlessly judy First women in the Humboldt County pen Busted for blocking an LP truck again Sheriffs asked them for their names all night long But they would only answer by singing this here song Judy Barry, Judy Barry Judy Barry, Judy Barry Let's repeat it endlessly Judy Barry, Judy Are Judy's pride and joy Judy made damn sure She didn't have a boy They formed children's earth First they renounced their toy tree spikes Everyone says That they act just like Judy Barry Judy Barry Judy Barry Judy Barry Let's repeat it Endlessly Judy Barry Judy Barry Judy loved that song. She loved all the songs about her. <laughs> so why don't we do, um, Judy Barry. I had the privilege to, to sing this song, to debut this song in front of the women's gathering for Judy Barry at the, um, at the, um, federal courthouse at 450 Golden Gate in San Francisco and, um, played this for her for the first time right there. And so, um, I've been singing it ever since and, Every book, every song, every movie, it gets this name because it is the question that needs to be asked. Who bombed Judy Barry? One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Judy Barry is a union organizer A mother Jones at the Georgia Pacific Mill She fought for the sawmill workers Hit by that PCB spill T. Marshall Hans calling GP shots from Atlanta Don Nelson sold them the union long ago Now they weren't gonna have no wobbly Running their logging show And they spewed out their hatred 
and they laid out their scam. Jerry Philbrick called for violence. Was no secret what they planned. So ask it out who bombed Judy Barry. I know you're out there still. Have you seen her broken body? Or the spirit you can't kill? Judy Barry is a feminist organizer. Ain't no man gonna keep that woman down. She defended the abortion clinic in fascist Ukiah town. Team Calvary Baptist Church called for its masses. Camo buddies lined up in the pew. All of their faces, New Kaya Daily News, and they spewed out their hatred, and they laid out their scam. Bill's Daily call for violence was no secret what they. For the spirit you can't kill Now Judy Barry is an earth-first organizer California Redwoods are her home She called for a Redwood summer Where the owl and the black bear roam He runs Max Am out of Houston. Harry Merlo runs LP from Portland Town. They're the men they call King Timber. They know how to cut you down. And Don Nolan spewed their hatred as Candy Boak laid out the scam. John Campbell called for violence. Is the mother of two children A pipe bomb went ripping through her womb She cries in pain at night time In a Willets cabin room FBI is back again with Pro. Richard Held is the man they know they trust With Lieutenant Sims as henchman the world of boom and bust But we'll answer with non-violence For seeking justice is our plan And we'll avenge our wounded comrade As we defend the ravaged land So ask it out who from Judy Barry I know you're out there still broken body for the spirit you can't kill who bombed Judy Barry I know you're out there still have you seen her broken body for the spirit you can't kill So everybody knows, you know, Judy and I had many nicknames for each other, and 
Um, I was the unignorable Daryl Cherney, and she was the undebatable Judy Barry. What did she say? Her, her favorite rep weapon was words at 10 paces? Yes. <laughs> and she was a virtuoso on the bullhorn. <laughs> that said, um, I took quite a number of our arguments, and since I couldn't win them, I put them to song. And so um, she, she very much enjoyed that. And so here's a song, one of, the, one of our arguments that I put to song, and it goes like this. I met Judy. I knew nothing till I met that gal. I knew nothing till I met Judy. Then I met Judy and got smart somehow. Well, there's one thing she surely did for me, did for me, was teach me all about labor history. History. So now I can relate to the working slob. Even though I've never had a job On which she does insist, does insist. She always wears her green shirt with a fist, with a fist. And it's an idea she got from her own head, her own head. Cause it couldn't have been from anything I said. No, I knew nothing till I met Judy. I knew nothing till I met that gal. Daryl, it would really please us. It would please us if your next tape had spike a tree for Jesus. Trees for Jesus. But now that she's brown nosing logging crews, logging crews, she says it's a song that I would never use. That's our Judy. I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I want to thank Karen Madsen, not just for curating this whole shebang, but letting us go over a little bit of time so we can let Judy's fiddle rise again. <laughs> thank you, Kerry Reynolds, playing that fiddle. Thank you, Mark Dykin on the sound, and Bear Dykin as well. And Alicia Littletree, Francine Allen, Edie Morris from the New Christie Minstrels. <laughs> I can't help it. It just comes out. Bug guts. <laughs> Rosebud and Scott, Mokai, and everybody else who's been helping to put this whole thing together. Thank you so much. And um, thank you, Daryl. Oh, hell yeah. And thank you to the spirit of Judy Barry. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Judy Barry. Viva Judy. I just got it. Whenever I've been singing these songs, listening to these songs, I really feel like Judy is truly coming back alive. I just feel her. I just, every song just makes me feel her again. So we are, we are just we're carrying it on. We're bringing her back to life. She's never really gone away. And so take her with you when you go. And we'll see you hopefully on the 10th with Dennis Cunningham and the legal team. It's going to be a good one. And this, this whole event closes on the 24th of October, unless it's kept open by popular demand. <laughs> I tried to call the Oakland Museum. I did call the Oakland Museum, and they were like, eh, well, I think we should go back and, like, you know, see the Oakland Museum can take this whole thing and put it down there. Yeah. So, yeah. so bless you all. It's just wonderful seeing you all. We'll hang around with shoes. Hey, if you want to fold your chairs and kind of lean up, bring them toward the door, I bet you the museum would really appreciate that. Wouldn't you, Karen? And thank you very much. Wonderful. Mm, I hate to go away, but this is wonderful. Thank you so much. Woo! Namaste.